right, what's going on? Mighty Mouse in the house. We did a video about a month ago where we poured some uh, self-consolidating concrete for, uh, for some walls. And I talked about how we also use a similar product for pouring floors. Well, once I can figure out how to open the lockbox and get inside the house here, uh, we're gonna do some topping floors with self-consolidating concrete. Kind of see what's going on in there? So yeah, we'll lay out some two-inch shows and do that, and we'll talk to the placers that are placing it, maybe get some tips and tricks and cues from them without revealing industry proprietary secrets or something like that. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna, uh, this is just a line pump gig. I brought the 24 just because that's what we had today. Might as well kick the boom out, reach to the front door, eliminate some hose. And uh, yeah, it should be, a, should be a piece of cake. Like I said, just a little bit of two-inch line here. Most of the uh, the interest with this video is going to be in the, the placement of the self-leveling concrete. For those who have not seen this before, it's really, really common in our area now. I would say 95% of topping floors like this are done in self-consolidating. Uh, there's very few guys left that will even uh, willingly screed conventional concrete, hand screed it. I think our own in-house placing crew is one of the very few. Um, yeah, so anyhow. We'll get set up here and uh, check back in when there's a little bit more excitement taking place. All right, here we go, all set up. I got the code to get in the house, we'll have a look at that in a second. Uh, so what I'm gonna do, I've got a 20 foot, two and a half inch hose off the boom here. I'm running my secondary screen, so the chances of plugging in that two and a half inch hose are basically zero. Uh, when the truck backs on, I'm gonna prime through the hose, I'm gonna cycle it around. Long hose, double ender, slowly, gingerly, checking for air, making sure we have flow. I'm not gonna hammer this through. Um, nice and slow, because that first bit of mix out of the truck can be a little bit uh, a little bit rocky and inconsistent. So we're gonna cycle this around to blend it up real good before we connect up to the rest of our line. If you try and get rid of the first half meter straight into the floor, uh, sometimes it's not ideal for the guys placing it, nor is it ideal for pumping it and priming it through the hose. So I'll cycle that around. Just gonna prime with water in the hopper, a little bit of water. We're gonna swing over. I got a bucket of bentonite here. What I'm gonna do, what I'm gonna do, what I'm gonna do. Let's just take a little tour here. I'm gonna walk upstairs to the end of the line here. Let's just tilt this reducer up for now. As such, when I throw the primer and then to the line, it'll come down here and it can puddle right in this area. We don't need much, um, even though this is a super wet mix. Trying to prime with water, in my experience, results in plugs of a horrible nature. Just because all the chemicals in it and whatnot, when it does plug, it plugs tighter than a you know what. So we're just going to do these two floors here with 75 feet of two inch hose. No big deal. Easy peasy, right? Or at least it should be. Try and do this with one hand. Something like this. Being very careful not to get any of this stuff on the floor. Not too bad. I probably could have grabbed a cone off the truck, but what fun would that have been? Anyway, I'm gonna shake this stuff back through, let it puddle in that reducer down below. Then when we connect up, we'll have that little bit of primer and we'll push it all the way up and we'll catch it in the end of the bucket here. Especially with this kind of mix with how thin the topping is. Cannot, cannot, cannot get any bentonite contamination in the floor whatsoever, so. I'll throw the rest of this back on the pump in my reserve and bring the bucket back and we'll catch it all. But yeah, I'm just gonna uh, trying to do this with one hand. Just kind of work this stuff back. Shake it all the way back down. And I think I actually have one hose caddy on this pump which is great for when you're working around these pipes. So I'm gonna throw that down too. So I'll throw that down. Just wait for concrete to get here. 
and uh, we will get cracking at it. This stuff is really, really cool when it goes down, especially the way these guys do it. They are uh, very well versed in the placement of this, even though it's called self-leveling. It's not really quite that easy. There's a lot of ins and outs to getting a, uh, a nice level floor with it. So today we'll get a lesson in how it's done. The other thing I might play around with for the first time today, uh, because we're gonna stretch the boom out, stretch all 55 feet of it out, and we'll have a long hose and lots of slack, and you know we're not gonna be inches off of a roof line or anything crazy like that. Uh, once we get pumping, because usually I like to be in there and help the guys out, help them drag hose around and whatnot, rather than just being a wallflower. Might power this guy down, and I will link up. I will link up. This guy right here. And how easy is it? I'll show you. Turn this off. Fire this one up. Let it link up. Honk the horn. Look at that. You got your volume right down here. The little indicator there, which is handy. Pump forward. Pump reverse. And what I like about this one versus the uh, the previous generation of these remotes, when you're actually in pump mode, it tells you on the LCD screen. It actually illuminates which is a nice handy feature to keep track of things. Because when you're super duper far away from the pump and sometimes you've uh, got background noise and maybe you can't hear things as uh, accurately as you like to, it's good to have a, uh, a visual, which this one does. So. so yeah, once we get into pouring the floors and we're primed through and the booms connected up, I'll, uh, I'll give this guy, take her for a little rip. All right, while we're sitting around, let's, uh, let's dress this old girl up some. Is that the spot? Is that the spot? Is that the spot? I think that's the spot. Yeah, that's the spot. Resale value just increased by 13.7%. Or maybe decreased, depending on the uh, potential demographic. Anyhow, concrete should be here any second. I've only been saying that for half an hour now, so, but I really mean it this time. Any second now, it'll be here. While we're waiting around here, let's play a fun game. The fun game is, if I had any money, and I wanted to replace this, this pump right here. Uh, the operative words being, if I had any money. So this is all just fantasy world stuff. 24Z puts my search as a 2005. What would you replace it with? A 20 meter puts my search? The new 24? The new 28? Perhaps a 31 meter swing? Perhaps a 32 double Z alliance? Hmm or any other uh, suggestions that I haven't mentioned. I don't know. These, uh, these little pumps are great, but it would be nice to have an extra 15 to 20 feet of reach, because I find with this 24 meter Z-boom, it kind of gets caught in no man's land, and that usually what we're, either, what we're pouring with it, where we really need the Z-boom, is stuff that's like 30 feet away from the truck. Typically laneway foundations buried under the wires, we don't need to reach out far, but we just need that uh, that low clearance working range. So it kind of gets caught in the middle there, and then a 20Z would be much better for that stuff. But for things like a house foundation, the vast majority of our stuff requires at least a 28 meter. Well, it's too short for that. So I, I feel like I feel like a 28 is kind of the hot ticket, or a 20. But most of the stuff we're doing with our uh, that we use the 20 meter for, it's easy enough just to line pump. 
right? So, I don't know, what do you think? In our market, I feel like the 20 could just be a, uh, a glorified line pump with a really high operating cost that would very often end up being billed out as the line pump, but would be incurring the maintenance and operating costs of a boom pump. Things to ponder. Hmm. 28Z puts, 32 Alliance, 31 Schwinn. 32 Alliance is probably about the same price as the 28 puts, maybe a smidge more. 31 Schwing is a is a good bit more. Awesome, awesome pump. But uh, yeah, all things considered, what would you do? Let me know in the comments. What would you do? All right, look what just showed up. Gonna rip some water through this screw. Forward pump, full volume. Just a few strokes. Little boom doesn't need much water. Perfecto. I'll prime this through and then I'll throw my screen on after. I uh, I don't like to prime through with the screen on because the stuff can bunch up on top of it here, so. I had a little squirt of water up in the hose here. Like I said, I'm just gonna put this through nice and slow, drape the hose. I don't wanna make a big splashy mess, and uh, it'll be great. Yeah, no, it's working. And we go nice and slow. a little more. He's a little splashy. The name of the game with this stuff, she's a little splashy. Slow her down a bit. That should about do it. And once we get her through, we're gonna work this around a few strokes and blend it up real nice. There it is, just like that. this stuff around real good mix all that water in on, yada 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 front door oh Tom's got a rotisserie chicken wow and uh, sweet rolls amazing okay we'll get down on that in a minute here
Yeah, I'll just hook this up at the front door here and rock and roll. Call this one the Cobra. See why? Something like that. I'm demonstrating the Cobra. It sounds about as weird as it actually is, trust me. I got it, good timing, I got it. We'll now release the Cobra. Bento was it? Yeah, a little bit of bento. Beautiful. We'll now lift this up. Like so. Back a bit. Take a couple strokes, let this stuff fall down the hose. Do this by eye and feel. There we go. Alright. Let's track this upstairs. I'm going to grab a pin for this clamp. I don't like that. Here it comes. Oh, did I miss it coming out of the bucket? Oh, man. Money shot. What? Oh, we're good. Okay. Ready? down a little bit. Look at that. No. What do you think of this whole 3,200 square feet down to what, like an hour? <laughs> Sir, yeah, service pending. All right, here we go. Okay. Is there, do you advance to world's best pump operator since you've won North America? Like well, then I lost, so I'm way back down on the uh, rankings, on the oh. world rankings. I think I'm ninth right now. Damn it. Or between uh, first and ninth will put me at fifth. <laughs> Look at this. That's cool. Don't need to lug that bloody boom pumper motor around anymore. Wow. You know? You have to excuse me, it's my first time with this thing. But now I can be a better hose puller. Beautiful.
days of work and bags of material and that's a 90% of applications. It's fun. And it's a housing shortage. <laughs> We're in a hurry here. It's a crisis. First load down. Oh, there's the pin. See, I told you I was gonna put the pin in. Where's the pin? We actually had a plug in the uh, three to two and a half reducer of all things. Which is uh, normally near impossible because of the screen that I run, but I'll show you what we found. Come back here, show you what we found. What we found was this. Which, as you can see, there's no way that would get through that screen. To me, it looks contoured like it's either out of an elbow or more likely, I'm going to say this was out of the bottom of the S-tube. Some uh, dirty little bugger left me some treats. Good times. Yeah, anyhow, uh, it's pretty rare for this stuff to plug in a three to two and a half taper unless it, uh, it's gotten too wet and it's segregated. So. That cost us some time and lots of fun because this stuff's so wet trying to uh, break it off on a finished property like this without making a mess. Uh, yeah, it's a little bit tedious to say the least. Thank you, Mr. Vinyl Spill Pool. You earned your keep today. Anyhow, we'll back on the second truck and hopefully that's the, uh, the end of these little biscuits. What do you think in the comments? I'm going to say S-tube. Maybe bottom of hopper, I don't think so though, because I scraped the hopper while I waited here for concrete. While I was waiting to get started, I think that's going to be a, an S-tube cookie. The diameter is too large to be out of a hose. Definitely S-tube, that's my, uh, my boat. Either way, it sucks. stretch was that about an hour and a half with 25 minutes lost to the plug to the blockage in the line something like that yeah. felt like 25 minutes she was a doozy don't worry I got pictures of the chunk and full explanation yeah last few strokes here we'll pack up and we are out all right just packing up here and we're gonna do the old the old water wash my preferred method for washing out with this stuff. All that caked on crud back there. And lock all that in with the hose. And then when we uh, travel to wash out, which is about an hour from here, it'll be easy peasy. Flood this thing right out. Thank you, Michael Zurich of Western Concrete Pumping for schooling me in the art of water washing. It's actually been a, uh, a very beneficial technique in certain instances, this being one of them. I wish I'd been doing this years ago. Anyhow, we'll flood this thing right out, pump this water through the taper back into the mixer, and uh, fold her on up. Oh yeah, and while, while we're talking about pumping out, getting pipes clean, yada, 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 I found, where did it go? Where did it go? Where did it go? There's another big chunk here. I'll find it when I'm cleaning up. It uh, was sitting right on the end of the, the three to two and a half taper when I pulled it apart. I will find the chunk. All right, just like that. About an hour and a half to place this. I believe they actually said it was 3,800 square feet. So, and this all gets uh, flooring on top of it. So very, very efficient way, very efficient way to place on these topping floors. So the concrete is more expensive. The labor on the placing is obviously less expensive. So anyhow, we'll, uh, we'll walk up here, hit the road. Oh yeah, before we roll out, 
Remember that second chunk I was looking for? Here she is. There's the first one. There's the second one. So sitting right between the uh, four to three and three to two and a half reducer. I'm still calling bottom of S tube is what I'm thinking. Yeah, because I believe, let's just do a little quick check here. This is the one that had deck pipe issues, build up issues in the deck pipe, I should say. No, that sounds pretty good. So yeah, I'm thinking Schmeg in the S tube. If I find anything conclusive when I do my wash out, I will let you know. But don't say it's for water washing because I'm only one who water washes and I water washed and pulled a sponge today because I'm a, I'm a good little pumper. So anyhow, uh, one thing I will say, pouring this job today, using the boom, completely not worth it. I would way rather run an extra two hoses and not have to deal with pulling back a sponge and the bigger hopper full of concrete and everything else that comes along with it. Yeah, it gets it done. Uh, I probably would have been better just to run the line right off the back end to tell you the truth. But I would have been way better just to use the line pump. Less fuel, less wear and tear. And uh, I can take it home and park it overnight if I finish late, so. Anyhow, you know it goes, like, share, subscribe, times three.